No, it cannot even be summed up. This game's main point is, it makes me laugh, this little blurb here. It says, you know that Bluebeard is a murderous bastard. That's not what this game is about. It is not. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mortals Inc. Podcast. It's Carlos with you again, and I got uh, good old Mikey on the old keyboard over there. Good old. Doing something for once. We're here. Today, we're going to talk about a little, something a little different called Bluebeard's Bride. Now, say that 10 times fast. I know, right? Uh, this is published by Magpie Games, and it was written by uh, Whitney Strix Beltran, which I'm sure I messed up that name, Marissa Kelly, and Sarah Doom. The cover and the art was what drew me to this, and it's a horror game. It's a horror tabletop game. It drew me too. Yeah, right? It's like we're talking cool. about this. I'm like, gold. Yeah. If I would have known what this was prior to going into it, I would have never read it because it's not my cup of tea. But because i never seen it and I thought the cover was cool, I started reading it. And it is... It is well written, and the artwork is horrifying. <laughs> oh, horrifying! In yeah. what way? So, <laughs> so it's based on a uh, old fairy tale, Bluebird's Bride. Basically, there's a guy named Bluebeard. He was supposed to be, you know, it, it, it varies. It, it says in here that it varies in different tailing, but the, the way they told it was, uh, Bluebeard was like a rich nobleman or whatever, and he always had wives, and he was a powerful man at a castle, and you know, he would go out and player. Yeah, basically, but he would get these brides, and uh, he would go out and find a new bride. What happened to the old brides? Eh, who knows, right? You know, he'd murder them. You know, there's no question. <laughs> so he would come back and say, hey, you know, he would give them anything they wanted. He'd give the family anything he wanted, give her anything they wanted, and go back to the castle, and he was, that's where she lived. He made a story that he had to leave. I had to leave for a day. You can, here's the keys to the castle. You can go every, anywhere you want except for this one room. Do not go in that room. And he leaves. Well, of course, the fairy tale is, you know, uh, whether it's curiosity or it's, you know, it's, it's, it's arrogance, it's demanding, it's just, hey, I'm going to go look anyway. She goes and looks, which ends, you know, causes her demise. Yeah. Basically. Bunch of skeletons everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, you know, that's a simple, like a, a horror story, whether it was told as a, a warning to women about the, 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 uh, the brutality of men or the, uh, the, the, the the importance of being a good bride back then, not now, back then. There was different time frames, but it's still a story for what it is. This is unique in its way that it is, it's not your standard role-playing game. It's a horror game, but it's more storytelling. Like I, the reason that I wouldn't play this is because I'm not that good a storyteller. Like you have to do it. It's a lot of on the, on the fly and it's really deep storytelling and it's horrific. I don't know if you ever, you read a lot of horror or anything like that horror books magazines the comic you gave me <laughs> okay the comic book horror that <laughs> love crafty and comic horror comes from different people like when you think of like like i'm thinking like you ever read frankenstein the original you did but like literally like is it like an abridged version or something yeah or, yeah. yeah so frankenstein it was written by uh mary shelley sounds familiar yeah <laughs> so Female, female writer. Mary, let us know. Yeah, She's so probably, when I was younger, uh, I digested a lot of uh, horror from a different people, and I never really pay attention to the names. But, you know, like Mary Shelley and, and, and uh, another female author I remember, is Anne, Anne Rice, you know, Interview with the Vampire. Sounds familiar. And then there was another one as a British lady named Tanith Lee. Now, those are the ones I remember reading. Now, I never cared, you know, who they were. I just wanted to know it was a good story. But now that I'm older and I understand, like, a female writer would write horror differently than say men would, or, you know, it's just different. It's not bad or good or anything else like that. It's just a different style of horror in here. It's, it, it's just horrific. Okay. Let me give you the bits. So basically you're a new bride. You play that. No, you don't play the new bride. The, the story is that background. You're a bride in a small town. You get swept up by this nobleman Bluebeard, and you go to his castle and he gives you those simple rules. This, the game is here's the keys of the castle. You can go anywhere you want. Don't go into that room. All right. So he leaves, and now there's five players. There's basically the bride is broken up into five different players, and it'd be like her psyche, basically, is what it is. There's the animus, which is like your righteousness, I guess. Your fatale, which is your, you know, dangerousness. The mother, you know, uh, the virgin, and the witch. Those are your five different psyches of that bride. Now you all play it, so you need five players to play it. I'm guessing. I don't know. I could be wrong. If somebody corrects me, go ahead. Because, like I said, I just read it. I haven't played it. Of those five players, one of them will get a ring card, and uh, they'll be in charge, or they can make the decisions because they have the ring. 
So what happens is you go in, and then there's the groundskeeper, which is like basically the, the, the storyteller. He has to come or he or she has to come up with the room to uh, for them to explore. So they say, okay, I want to go to this room and I have a key. Well, then the player, whoever has the key, uh, the one who holds the ring, describes the key and say, oh, it's an old, it's an old bronze key with scratches on it. So then the groundskeeper would say, okay, what kind of room would that be? You know, like, okay, it's an old bronze key with the scratches on it. Maybe it's his, maybe it's his den. You know, he uses it a lot. So he's always in, in there and out there. And so she'll describe the door. It's a big wooden door. And, you know, you would open the door. And then they, from there, they would describe what the room is almost off the cuff. Well, then the other players would help. So then the groundskeeper would then decide what type of horror is in there for her, you know, for this, for the players, for the, for the bride that walks in. Like, is it something like, uh, maybe this is where he murdered one of his wives. Maybe this is where he took his mistress. Maybe this is where he did something terrible that they would have to deal with. And the ghost of those, uh, the ghost of those uh, past brides would be in there to cause damage to say, you know, like uh, to the different psyches, you know? So you all have to, the, the, the psyches have to decide what to do, you know, or how to interpret that particular thing. Do they stay there and confront the horror? Do they run from the horror? Do they ask for help? Um, from the staff, which I forgot the staff is also like, there's the staff, Bluebeard staff, you know, they're always with Bluebeard. They're loyal to him or they're not loyal to him. You have to, you know, you have to make all those up. It's almost on the fly, but this is very, you know, all the players and the groundskeeper come up with this story as they go. It's improvised. Yeah. It's very improvised, which is another reason why I wouldn't be good at it because I'd be like, you know, I don't, you've never played with me, but my villains are always Bob. You know, you know, and I just, Jeff. I don't have that much creativity on the fly. And uh, the horror they describe in here is different. Like if I'm mad at you, like, ah, you did this punch in the face or, you know, a guy would stab or shoot somebody or, you know, like the women in this particular, the writers in this, and I'm not saying that all women, I'm just saying women, you know, these particular writers came up like, Oh, I, I cut her face off. It's like, who does that? You know, like that, that's, you know. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's, that's know, an alternative you know, oh, for well, sure. You know, I don't want to offend her, so I'll cut my own face too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, and it's like, it's it's in here and it's like, oh, this is this is terrible. You know, Free like, will, free will. So what happens is uh, you have to tell the story and you investigate these rooms and you're, you're going to go to the final room. When you go into the final room that's, basically how you end do you end as a loyal wife or do you end as a a, dis, a dishonored dishonorable wife if you end as a dishonorable wife which means you told bluebeard you know you know i don't believe you i'm gonna i'm gonna rat you out to the, the citizens or whatever that you killed all these women and you know even if you do that all the people you got to think about like they're like hey think about like maybe bluebeard gave your family, took them out of poverty, or maybe your bluebeard made them a, a noble or something like that. If you go there and you denounce them, they're not going to believe you. Or if you go there, you know, the evidence is not going to have, do you have enough evidence to do this? So you're, you're going to lose that battle. If you stay loyal to him, he's going to be mad that you open the door. So you're not to him. You're not loyal. So you're dead. You're going to die either way. And the, the story does not, end he's well going to kill you, you yeah, no matter it what it does not end well for you. And then <laughs> It's just the storytelling of it to be true to the, uh, to basically the, uh, tells you to never settle. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> what, and, and I'm not saying it a bad way. I just don't know. It's like, it's pretty deep. It's way deeper than I thought. It, it was sounds gonna be. different. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like, oh, you're in a castle or something like that. And like pirates are going to get, no, it's totally not at all what I thought it was. And it's a good read. It's well-written. If you like, if you have a group that story tells, like, I don't know if you can lose less than five players you know like i don't know how you would do that because part of the game is also that you all have different abilities like the the, the five i said have different abilities and it, you know like the the like the mother could be authority she could tell the staff what to do the witch can pull upon uh, dark thoughts and um the annulus is righteous or, or forward in her thinking you know it's just different things and the different abilities they have there's minimum dice rolling i think it's like Maybe a D6 or something, you get to add one or two, you know, at most one and you get a minus one for other things like the intricacies of the rules. I'd have to play it to see it. But to read the book, it's just well written and it's well done. The artwork is phenomenal. There's some cards that go with it that, that help you build the rooms. And then there's a couple other books that go with this. But this is from Magpie Games. And if you like if you have a group that's very creative. And you like horror, like classic old style this is like Edgar. an rpg for actors bunch of actors on yeah the go. yeah I, I think that would be it because you know you, you're impromptu and uh right on the go 
Oh, it says right on the back, three to five people. So I guess you can use this. Yeah. <laughs> Discover Bluebeard's uh, closet of severed heads. Yeah, you know, but that would be that. When you go in the room, yeah, that's, that would be you know, one you'd of the have things. to come up with this. and It could be severed heads or it could be severed ring fingers. And it seems like the players, and if I'm wrong on this, please somebody correct me. Severed toenails. But it seems like, if, I, if I'm wrong on this, please somebody correct me. But it, it seems like everybody is part of the storytelling and it just builds up to it. And there's no good ending. And you could you could re- replay this game, you know, with somebody else. Then you know, I guess it would be the next person. I think they suggest that the next person would then just be the groundskeeper, and then the other th- four or five, the other five would then play the different parts. And um, it's cool. I could I couldn't play this. I, I'm not that creative to come up with that, and it's not something, you know, that's not my style of play. But if it is to you and you like to be, and it's not like combat related, and you don't have to come up with all the stats. Pretty much the sheets are all there. An interesting thought I, I fact I or, uh, part of it was like if part of your like if one of the player characters the psyche they break they can be damaged or or, or, or violence done to them or whatever and where they lose their mind or snap they basically become uh, it's insanity basically from what I'm reading it what I understand insanity and then they become with the groundskeeper against the other four then it's, yeah, it's against the other two against the other one you know it's like you slowly decay into madness. Wow, Cthulhu so, related all yeah, the time. You know, I think madness is an old, just embedded. It, it, I think madness is just an old. It's uh, embedded yeah, in the culture. In the culture. But if you're looking for something completely different, you like storytelling, and you want, and you like horror, and any of those uh, type of writers I mentioned, they even mention a good movie. Inside Out, Disney. Yeah, no, I've seen it. Crimson, Crimson Peak. You ever see that? Uh, Heard of it? Ex Machina. Yeah, Ex okay. Machina. Yeah. That type of thing. That was a female lead in yeah. that, right? I don't think I remember. It was like a robot female, right? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, girl with a dragon tattoo, the captured bird, the company of wolves, the orphanage. Yeah, all very dark stuff. So that's that's the movies they like. They that's also, your inspiration, right? Yeah. There. They also list a bunch of books and and, and other other writings to uh, take a look at. But like I said, if you're looking for something different, uh, it is different. It is different. It's very good. It's well written. The artwork great it's horrifying and it's it's well done in black and white and blue face is peeled off yeah it is it is mature (laughs) definitely adults only and it's from magpie games like i said they come up with some different kind of stuff and we have it yeah we have this in stock we have actually at one point i got a line of the magpie games so we have a lot of stuff over there it's all different it's all good mortalsinc.com yep All right, give it a try. I hope you like this. Uh, Subscribe to us if you like what you see. Uh, Give us a like, subscribe. Uh, Tomorrow, we actually have something going on on live. Yeah, if you see this today on the, what is today's date? Today, uh, today is Wednesday. Wednesday, February 28th. No, today's Tuesday. Tuesday, (sighs) February. Today's Tuesday. Tuesday, Tomorrow, Wednesday, the 1st. On the 1st of March, we're We're having a a, uh, Metazoo Nightfall box break. We're doing something live. Josh Miller will be here. He'll be here. We'll be here. So give it a listen. Give it a look. And uh, like I said, like and subscribe. Check all our social media. And uh, see you guys later. Toodaloo.